Hey, it's your friendly neighborhood Potato Witch. Welcome to the show. My history as someone who has played a lot of RPGs is one that also involves a lot of level grinding. Not always out of necessity either due to a game's inherent difficulty. No, sometimes I just enjoy being overpowered as hell, and so I go out of my way to make sure this happens. Sometimes power is just a nice side effect of doing something else that's needless for a certain point in the game, like making sure I can buy the lifetime pass the very first time I go to the gold saucer in Final Fantasy VII. Don't judge me. Given that I really enjoy this process when it's done voluntarily, what could appeal to me better than bonus dungeons? Those optional areas in RPGs that are usually difficult grind fests that test the player's tenacity and often reward them with powerful items. Seriously, I love me a good bonus dungeon, and finding out that a game has one usually brings a smile to my face because I'm that kind of masochist. So today, I want to talk about my top 7 favorite bonus dungeons in RPGs. These aren't in any particular order, really, and full disclaimer, these are my favorite bonus dungeons. Doesn't mean they're objectively the best, doesn't mean they have to be everyone's favorite, but they're definitely my favorite. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this video filled with the parts of video games that I think only a particular kind of weirdo really enjoys. Number 7. The Sealed Temple from pretty much every edition of Final Fantasy V from the Game Boy Advance onward. As I said, this list isn't in order of preference, so the only reason I'm mentioning this one first is because I'm currently playing through Final Fantasy V for an upcoming video. The Sealed Temple is an underwater dungeon that first appears towards the end of the game. You can go into it and collect some crystal shards that unlock a few new jobs, which may or may not be useful depending on your playstyle, but if you're going for 100% completion, then yeah, gotta do this. But that's really all you can do there. For now. You see, once you beat the final boss, save the game, and then load it back up, the Sealed Temple gets a lot more interesting. The whole dungeon is split into multiple different areas, and it's pretty vast. There are a lot of boss fights down here if you're looking for an extra challenge to test your skills, some equipment that you can't find anywhere else and that are, of course, better than anything you could get elsewhere, and most importantly, a final super boss that was mentioned in the main game, one you were told was dead, but whoopsie, turns out he's been sealed away here this whole time, now get to the killing! Beating this guy gives you access to yet another job class, which, again, is necessary for 100% completion. Getting through everything that the Sealed Temple has to offer is a test in both patience and how many powerful healing items you stocked up on. It's a great challenge for players who enjoyed the main game, but want a little something else to do now that the main story is over, and completing it can give some pretty great bragging rights. I mean, 4% of people playing the Steam version managed to complete the whole thing, which ought to give you some idea of just how difficult it can be. But it does yield some great rewards if you're willing to put yourself through it. Number 6. The Omega Ruins from Final Fantasy X You could play the entire game without ever stumbling across this bonus dungeon, since you get to it by inputting certain coordinates from the airship. Similar to the aforementioned Sealed Temple, though, if you're going for 100% completion, then visiting this place is a must, since there are some items that can only be found here, like one of the Albed Primers. It's also filled with some pretty powerful enemies, featuring such series classics as Adamantuses, Master Tonberries, and Great Marlboros. It's not a very large dungeon, but the difficulty comes from the strength of the enemies, especially if you want to spend the time capturing 10 of each for the Monster Arena quest. And sure, you could breeze through the bulk of it by having some equipment with the No Encounters ability, but where's the fun in that? But there are two bosses here that can really give you a run for your money if you're not prepared. Ultimate Weapon and Omega Weapon. If you're playing the original PS2 version of the game, Omega Weapon is tough, sure, but for the HD re-release they apparently decided, nah, changes so that players will want to pull their hair out over the difficulty. Like, they made him ten times beefier, upped all his stats, and made him absorb all freaking elemental attacks, what the hell even is this? You beat Omega Weapon on the HD remaster, you get to pat yourself on the back, friends, because that is no easy feat. Number 5. The Amala Labyrinth from Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne Now, this one is sort of a bonus dungeon, and sort of not. There's a mandatory visit as part of the main story, but only the very first area. If you want, you can ignore the whole thing entirely after that. But if you want to tackle it, different areas of it will open up after you complete certain optional boss fights, so you really have to go out of your way to get the most out of this dungeon. Shin Megami Tensei games aren't exactly known for being easy, and this is a bonus dungeon that's not even in the original version of the game. No, the Amala Labyrinth was added to the Maniacs version of the game, which was what we in the West got as Nocturne. So, oh good, a harder version of a hard game involving a hard bonus dungeon, this is gonna go swimmingly. Seriously though, it's a good challenge, and I liked making my way through it when I first played. It's got some freaking amazing extra bosses there, like Dante from Devil May Cry. 
Yes, he's in this game because crossovers, I guess, and also because demons. You can get him on your side and have him fight in your party, so if you're big into the DMC series, this might be of interest to you. For my part, though, I never really got into those games, so Dante's presence here wasn't really anything I cared about. But oh yes, you can also defeat Metatron. You get to kill the voice of God in this game. So there's that. Honestly, this game, like all SMT games, is so full of mythology that it would be really hard to get into all the implications of the Amala Labyrinth. Like, great, I can kill the voice of God, encounter a couple of creator deities, and hey, I guess this is also where Lucifer hangs out too. Nifty. I'm a big mythology nerd, so even aside from the fun of a run in a tough dungeon, I enjoy just getting to see the extra ways Nocturne played with mythologies and gave that mind screw a little extra turn. Number four. The Eternal Corridor from Jade Cocoon. This one isn't on the list because it's any great challenge or anything, but more because I really like the game and I like the few extras that the Eternal Corridor offers. Jade Cocoon is a monster catching RPG with some unique elements that I'll talk about when I make a full video on it, but for the purposes of this list, it has a post-game dungeon known as, obviously, the Eternal Corridor. And it's kind of what it sounds like, mostly. It's 1,000 levels in which not much happens but monster encounters, and once you beat the thousandth level, you keep repeating the last couple of sections over and over again. So it's not really eternal, and more just, do this as much as you want. The only way out is by giving up and starting over from the beginning next time, so it's more of an endurance crawl than anything else. But it does give you the chance to get some unique skins that you can use when fusing monsters together to create new ones. Want to make a lizard bird that looks like it has the pelt of a tiger? One of the skins dropped by a boss in the Eternal Corridor can help you do that. The skins are pretty much just cosmetic, but it's pretty cool to be able to customize the appearance of your monsters like this. I'd say it's a bragging rights thing, but given that Jade Cocoon isn't exactly a well-known game and it's also over 20 years old now, I can't imagine too many people are going to brag a lot about having done this. Still, I love me a good dungeon crawl, and cosmetic skins are neat, and this game is one of my all-time favorites on the PS1, so the Eternal Corridor definitely makes this list. Number 3. The Destroyed Belt from Digimon World DS I love the Digimon World series. They're not the most complex monster-catching RPGs out there, not by a long shot, but the stories are always better than I think a lot of people give them credit for. Combine that with a post-game bonus dungeon, and oh hell yes, gimme gimme gimme! To unlock the destroyed belt, you first have to defeat six of the seven demon lords, and yeah, I, I bet you never thought you'd hear the phrase seven demon lords in a Digimon game, but Digimon can play with mythological elements about as much as the Shin Megami Tensei games sometimes. They just slip it under the radar more effectively. Aw, what a great E for everyone game! Now let's go kill Beelzemon and Lusamon! Anyway, doing that unlocks the destroyed belt, and if you make your way through it, then you can fight all of the demon lords back to back in one long mega boss battle. Now, this may sound tough, but honestly, it's not too difficult. I mean, there are harder bosses in the game for sure, and the challenge here is just doing a bunch of boss battles back to back. Beating them all can give you some good equipment drops and the scan data to unlock a couple of extra Digimon too, which is good if you're looking to do so. Honestly, the reward of this dungeon is pretty tame compared to most of the others on this list, as is the actual challenge of it. Why is it here? Oh, well, because I really just enjoy doing it. It's something I make a point of doing every time I replay this particular game, and I have a fascination with the Demon Lords in the Digimon games, and I think it's just pretty cool that they get an inclusion here. The bonus dungeon itself is nothing special, I just kinda like it. Number 2. The Chrysler Building from Parasite Eve the Chrysler Building is a bonus dungeon that's unlocked when you beat Parasite Eve once and then start playing a New Game Plus session, essentially. Start up a new game, gain control of Aya, and you can go tackle the dungeon right from the get-go if you really want. A lot of the stuff carries over into the second run of the game, like your bonus points, items, and whatever high-powered weapons you acquired for yourself during the first run of the game. Which is good, because the enemies you'll encounter in the Chrysler Building are stronger than normal. Oh, and you can also only save once every 10 floors. So there's that. See, this dungeon is 77 floors high, most of which are randomly generated, so you can't look up maps to help you out, so hope you enjoy exploring! There are also bonus bosses here, including some that don't appear anywhere else in the game. But the real reason to tackle the challenge of the Chrysler Building is to beat the game's true final boss and see the true ending. Oh, you thought the game was over when you defeated the creepy-ass ultimate being? No, no, you still gotta defeat Eve, or rather, a clone of your dead sister that Eve created to exist in... Look, it's Parasite Eve, okay? It's complicated and it makes sense in context. Sort of. 
Either way, you get a cool bonus boss that's essentially considered the true final boss of the game, given that it's far harder to defeat than the ultimate being, as well as giving you some interesting extra bits of story. It's a messed up bonus dungeon in a messed up game, and I kinda love it, cause what sort of self-respecting video game masochist wouldn't? Number 1. Hell's Gate from Tactics Ogre now, I'm talking specifically about the PlayStation version of this game and not the remake for the PSP, which was called Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together. And I'm talking about this version for a specific reason, which I'll get to in a minute. See, Hell's Gate is a late game optional dungeon that's 100 floors deep, which means 100 battles in a turn-based strategy RPG. In a row. No healing in between. Leave the dungeon and you'll be starting from the beginning next time you go in. In a game genre that's already known to be difficult, and with a game series that's already known to be difficult, a 100 battle endurance crawl is a big ask. Plus you have to do the whole thing at least twice if you want to get all that this dungeon has to offer. Now, why am I talking about this dungeon and not the one that's in the remake, which is renamed the Palace of the Dead? Well, the dungeon in the remake may have extra floors added to it in the post-game, making it even more of an endurance run and giving extra content, but that version also has items that can allow you to skip multiple floors of the dungeon. It bypasses a lot of the tedium of redoing, you know, dozens of levels again and again if you just want to get to certain areas, and believe me, that is a great option to have, but there's something about the demand of having to do a 100 level dungeon crawl twice with no skips that feels more... raw, more... I don't know how to describe it without making it sound like I think people who didn't skip the levels are somehow better players than the one who did, because that's not what I'm trying to say at all, but... I guess I just appreciate the additional challenge of having to do it the hard way and not having those skips available. I've always been the sort to enjoy challenges like this in RPGs, and knowing that I could just skip over things to make it more convenient is great, as I said, but it ruins some of the challenge aspect for me. Again, I want to reiterate that if players want to use such things to bypass tedium, more power to you. This is just a list of personal preferences at the end of the day, and my preference goes to Hell's Gate in the original game. So there you have it, my top favorite bonus dungeons and RPGs. Chances are I missed someone's favorite on here, since there are a lot of RPGs with some great bonus dungeons out there, but I didn't feel it was fair to include any from games that I haven't actually played. Hopefully someday I'll get a chance to play more and expand my list, and who knows, maybe in the future I'll revisit this concept and make a second video covering more cool bonus dungeons. Thanks to everyone for watching me ramble on about some of the cool stuff I love in video games. Let me know in the comments what's your favorite bonus dungeon from an RPG, and if you want to support the channel, feel free to leave a like or share this around or something of the sort. It really means a lot. Take care, and I'll see you all again soon with another video. Bye!